liftoff of the mighty Delta IV heavy rocket with NASA's Parker Solar Probe, a daring mission to shed light on the mysteries of our closest star, the Sun. Imagine building a spaceship and sending it straight into the atmosphere of the actual sun. Sounds like science fiction, right? But NASA just made it real. The Parker Solar Probe flew closer to the sun than any spacecraft in history, literally touching the sun's outer atmosphere and living to tell the tale. This isn't just a space flex, it's changing everything we know about our solar system's fiery heart. From surviving million degree heat to surfing solar winds, this mission is rewriting the rule book. Let's break down how NASA pulled off one of the boldest space stunts of all time. Chapter one, NASA's daring mission, touching the sun. All right, so let's start with something insane. NASA launched a spacecraft to touch the sun, not kinda close, not hovering nearby. I mean, literally flying through the sun's atmosphere. And it didn't melt. It didn't explode. It just kept going. This little beast is called the Parker Solar Probe, and it's one of the most ambitious space missions in human history. Think of it as a daredevil spaceship with one mission, get closer to the sun than anything before it, and survive. But why would NASA even want to do this? I mean, it's the sun, it's hot, it's deadly, and it's 93 million miles away. Well, here's the thing. We still don't fully understand the sun. It powers life on Earth, controls our seasons, messes with our satellites during solar storms, and yet it's still full of mysteries. Like, why is the corona, the sun's outer atmosphere, hotter than its surface? That's like your campfire smoke being hotter than the fire itself. It makes no sense. So, NASA said, let's go find out. And they launched Parker back in 2018, naming it after physicist Dr. Eugene Parker, who first proposed the idea of solar winds, those invisible streams of charged particles constantly blowing off the sun. For the first time ever, a NASA spacecraft was named after a living scientist. That's how big this was. But flying toward the sun is not as easy as it sounds. In fact, it's way harder than going to Pluto. Why? Because the sun's gravity is pulling on everything like a giant magnet. To fall into the sun, you actually have to fight against the Earth's orbital speed. So NASA had to launch Parker on a special trajectory slingshotting it around Venus multiple times to gradually slow it down and spiral inward. And every time it passes Venus, it gets closer and faster. We're talking traveling at nearly 400,000 miles per hour, fast enough to circle Earth 15 times in one hour. That makes it the fastest human-made object in history. Let that sink in, and here's the crazy part. As of its closest flyby in 2021, Parker got within 5.3 million miles of the sun's surface. That's deep inside the corona. For comparison, Mercury, the closest planet to the sun, is 36 million miles away. Parker was seven times closer than Mercury. And it didn't just fly by, it actually collected data, took measurements, and sent it all back to Earth. Information that's already giving scientists clues about solar storms, the origins of solar wind, and maybe even how to predict dangerous space weather before it hits Earth. And this is just the beginning. Chapter 2. How the Parker Probe Didn't Burn Alive OK, so the big question now is, how the heck did Parker survive? We're talking about a spacecraft flying through temperatures that can reach millions of degrees Fahrenheit. That's not just too hot to handle, that's instantly vaporized territory. And yet, Parker just cruised on through like it had SPF 1 million. So what's the secret? The answer lies in some mind-blowing engineering. The Parker Solar Probe is wrapped in a carbon composite heat shield called the Thermal Protection System. 
or TPS if you're a NASA nerd. It's just 4.5 inches thick, but it can withstand temperatures up to 2,500 degrees Fahrenheit on the front, while keeping the instruments in the back at a comfy 85 degrees Fahrenheit, basically room temperature. I mean, think about it. The front is getting blasted by the most extreme heat in the solar system, and the back is chilling like it's in your living room. That's some serious insulation. But here's the twist. Even though the corona's temperature is in the millions, it's not that dense, so there aren't a lot of particles to transfer heat. That's why Parker doesn't instantly fry, because in space, heat doesn't feel the same as it does on Earth. There's not enough matter to conduct it quickly. Wild, right? Still, this isn't a walk in the park. The probe has to constantly keep its heat shield pointed perfectly at the sun. Even a tiny misalignment and boom, mission over. That's why Parker is almost entirely autonomous. There's a time delay in communicating with Earth, so it has to think and react on its own to stay alive. It's basically a self-driving car, but flying into hellfire, and it's not just heat. Parker also had to survive intense radiation, micrometeorite impacts, and wild plasma storms that would rip most spacecraft to pieces. Every component, from its solar panels to its scientific instruments, had to be custom-built to handle this insane environment. Speaking of instruments, Parker isn't just out there vibing, it's working. It carries a suite of tools to measure things like magnetic fields, plasma density, solar wind particles and electromagnetic waves. It's like a cosmic weather station, but inside the storm. And here's the kicker, Parker is already rewriting what we thought we knew. One big surprise, the solar wind isn't as smooth as we imagined. It's filled with zigzagging kinks, almost like magnetic switchbacks. Scientists still don't fully understand what's causing them, but Parker's data is bringing us closer. Another mind blower, Parker found that solar dust gets pushed away from the sun's vicinity, creating a mysterious dust-free zone. It's something we've theorized, but never actually observed until now. And we're not done yet. The probe is going to get even closer to the sun in future flybys. The closer it gets, the more secrets it uncovers. So, what does all this mean for us here on Earth? Stay tuned, because Chapter 3 is where it all comes together. Chapter 3. Why Parker's mission matters to all of us. All right. So we've sent a spacecraft into the sun's atmosphere, survived mind-melting heat, and started collecting data we've never seen before. But now you might be wondering, what's the point? Like sure, it's awesome space science. It's cool that we built a spaceship that can stare down the sun without flinching. But how does that actually affect you and me back here on Earth? Well, turns out, in more ways than you'd think. Let's start with solar storms. These are massive eruptions from the sun, blasts of charged particles and magnetic energy that shoot out into space. When they hit Earth, they can do serious damage. I'm talking GPS blackouts, radio signal drops, airline communication issues, and worst of all, power grid failures. In fact, back in 1989, a solar storm actually knocked out electricity across Quebec, Canada in under two minutes. That's how powerful the sun's tantrums can be. And here's the scary part. Our modern world is even more vulnerable now. Everything runs on satellites, internet, navigation, electric grids. If a massive solar storm hits today, it could cause trillions of dollars in damage. Think of it like a space hurricane, but one we can't see coming unless we understand how the sun works. That's where the Parker Solar Probe comes in. By flying into the corona and directly sampling the solar wind, Parker is helping us figure out what triggers these solar storms, how they travel, and, most importantly, how to predict them. It's like building an early warning system for space weather. One day, thanks to Parker, we might be able to alert airlines, power companies and satellite operators before the sun decides to throw a tantrum. But it's not just about defence, it's also about curiosity. The sun is our life source. It drives our climate, lights our days, grows our food. And yet, it's been a giant glowing mystery for most of human history. 
now for the first time, we're reaching out and literally touching it. We're answering questions we've had for centuries, like why the solar atmosphere behaves so strangely, how energy moves through space, and what the fundamental forces shaping our solar system really are. And let's not forget, this mission is a monument to human ingenuity. We built a spacecraft that can fly through fire, navigate autonomously, and send us back answers from a place no one's ever been. It's bold, it's risky, it's straight up inspirational. So the next time you look up at the sky and feel the warmth of the sun on your face, just remember, there's a tiny probe out there racing through that fireball at hundreds of thousands of miles per hour all so we can understand our star a little better. And that's pretty epic.